before moving on to the next session, I would like to show you how Tylos manages accounts and resources. The accounts and resources can be found in the uh, Tylos Explorer on the left hand side of your screen. So by uh, clicking on the scroll bar and uh, dragging it uh, downwards, and by clicking the plus symbol next to resources and accounts, and uh, double clicking the account field. And uh, as you can see here, uh, in the middle of your screen, the Tylos library uh, contains uh, a list of cost centers with which you can split the project costs into uh, separate accounts. And uh, the list of accounts can be tuned, i.e. Uh, customized, uh, to meet uh, the specific uh, project uh, needs. Let's now go back to the uh, Tylos Explorer, uh, to the, uh, the resources section. And again, uh, double click on the, the resources uh, field. Uh, as you can see uh, in the top uh, middle of your screen, um, the Tylos uh, lists the, uh, the resources in a hierarchical uh, manner. Uh, different types of uh, resources uh, can be uh, created. Uh, Different models, different calculation models uh, can also be, uh, can be stored here. Uh, TLOS uh, can actually calculate uh, what resources are uh, required uh, across a, a total project uh, as long as uh, these, uh, these jobs and uh, resources uh, move basically from one job uh, to another inside the, uh, the actual project. Tylos is also capable of taking complex uh, resources uh, into consideration, i.e. Uh, a mixture uh, of resources. Uh, if we, for example, click on the plus symbol next to uh, machines, uh, we can see here that um, we have uh, a number of tasks which, uh, which also include uh, operators. Uh, in this uh, specific case, um, Tylos uh, takes equipment uh, and an operator but also things like, like gasoline and uh, diesel uh, into uh, consideration uh, too. And uh, all these um, resources uh, that are stored here in a hierarchical manner have uh, one specific thing in common. They can be assigned uh, to uh, any tasks and activities uh, in the main working area uh, of your plan. And this is something that I'm going to show you how to do next. Assign resources uh, to tasks. In order to assign resources to tasks, we must return to our time distance view. So, by uh, moving to the scroll bar and uh, dragging it upwards to the time distance view, please double click and in the main working area, select the topsoil stripping task. Uh, from the previous session, we learned that it is possible to estimate the duration of uh, a task to be carried out without resources solely on the basis of quantity and work rate. So if we move on to the calculation view tab in the details toolbar, we can see that in this specific case, it was uh, 240 square meters per hour, which had to be achieved. We now want to uh, move along uh, to the, uh, the resources view tab along here in the uh, details toolbar. And uh, by clicking this, uh, we have the uh, opportunity uh, to add uh, resources and select resources for our specific task by clicking on the plus symbol assign resources icon. Once you have clicked on the uh, plus symbol icon, the most important question you have to ask yourself now is what resources do I require to get my job done. So in this specific example, let's click on the plus sign next to the, uh, the labor section. And for example, uh, let us choose the uh, assistant by ticking in the box and for example, uh, an operator. And uh, we will then choose from the uh, machines section by clicking again on the uh, plus symbol. We will then choose uh, a caterpillar after we have done so, we will then proceed to uh, the bottom of the screen and by uh, clicking on OK, we will have successfully assigned these resources to the task in hand. 
If we take a closer look at uh, the details toolbar at uh, the bottom of our screen, we can see that uh, the calculation model uh, that I have applied is the, uh, the allocation model. Now, this calculation formula is basically the easiest and uh, simplest way to calculate costs based on the, uh, the input value shown here and uh, the effort shown here and last but not least I will just move the, uh, the scroll bar along the bottom slightly to uh, improve uh, the visibility and um, the unit cost. This means that uh, by changing the input value for example to 4 as opposed to 1 and by hitting return please look at the, uh, the column cost on your far right hand side and you will see that by entering the input value 4 that my costs have quadrupled uh, to 18,900 euros. Tylus also enables you to handle direct cost assignments uh, without resources by clicking on the uh, euro and uh, dollar symbol in the uh, details toolbar we can then select an account structure from the, uh, the list above simply by ticking one of the boxes. In this specific case we will uh, choose the, uh, the income field for uh, this specific example and by confirming this by pressing OK we can now see that uh, the income uh, has been added to our list in the, uh, the resources view tab in the details toolbar. It is worth mentioning here that uh, direct cost uh, can be assigned as a, a fixed value, for example, uh, 10,000 uh, euros for the entire task or based on time, i.e. 500 euros per day or based on the task quantity. However, in uh, this uh, specific example, uh, we are uh, going to uh, change the input value to 1 and by uh, taking the scroll bar and uh, dragging it along slightly to let, until we reach the unit cost column. If we insert, for example, by double clicking this field in the input value 0 0.5 and by confirming this by clicking on OK, if we uh, then click on the calculation uh, view tab in the details toolbar uh, we can now see on uh, the right hand side that uh, the cost is uh, 17,550 euros at uh, a unit cost of uh, 0 0.54 euros or 54 cents and below we have a uh, fixed income of 16,200 euros at a unit price of 50 cents. Now, the question we need to ask ourselves here is that uh, what do we need to do to optimize uh, our income, i.e. what do we need to do to earn money as opposed to uh, losing money. So if we uh, go to the, uh, the planned work rate field and change this to 300 square meters, per hour and uh, hitting the uh, return button, uh, we can now see uh, that we have a different cost structure. Our income remains the same. However, instead of, uh, of losing money, uh, as we were a moment ago, 1,350 euros uh, to be exact, we are now making money based on this calculation model. By clicking on the soil removal task, I would now like to show you how other resources are assigned uh, to tasks and how complex they can be sometimes. If we move on to the details toolbar at the bottom, if we click on the uh, resources view tab, then we can see that uh, resources have already been uh, assigned to this specific task. Why is this so? Well, it's uh, basically because when we uh, inserted uh, the task initially, uh, it was uh, based on a predefined uh, template and it already had resources uh, assigned to it. If we uh, then go into a little bit more detail by uh, clicking on the excavator 
and then uh, clicking on um, the truck, we can see that uh, with the excavator, it is a, a complex resource as it uh, itself, the excavator and the uh, operator are both uh, assigned uh, per hour uh, to this task. Um, the truck, the truck is calculated as you can see here by uh, unit and time. This means how many units can the truck carry away again also per hour. So now let's uh, change some of, the, uh, some of the information to give you uh, a brief insight into uh, how this all combines with one another. If we uh, change, for example, the input value to uh, say 120 cubic meters as opposed to 160, we can see after we hit the return button that um, we only require three trucks now. Uh, beforehand, it, uh, it was uh, four. I'll just change it back to the 160. And you can see that uh, due to the, uh, the increased amount of cubic meters, we will then require one truck more, in this case, four. And uh, I'm sure you've noticed that uh, the plan in the main working area has also been updated accordingly. Uh, if we move back down to, uh, say, the, uh, the excavator, and if we, for example, want to change uh, the number of excavators to two, as opposed to the allocated one, again, insert the number two, and hitting the return button, we can see now that we require a total of eight trucks, including the driver, i.e. the operator, and again, we can see that uh, in the main working area above, Tylos has graphically updated the working schedule. Before we uh, proceed to the next part of our uh, tutorial, let's change the, uh, the data in the resources uh, column allocation of the details toolbar back to its um, initial state uh, to uh, update um, the working plan accordingly. The next phase of our online tutorial is about how Tylos displays resource data. Resource data can be displayed as a diagram or diagrams along the time or the distance axis. And uh, inside our uh, sample project uh, on the uh, left hand side in the uh, Tylos Explorer uh, there is a, another view uh, defined which uh, contains resource data and uh, by double clicking on this view we can see that uh, the distance scale uh, on the mean time distance view has changed in order to show the diagrams on uh, the right hand side. I will just move my mouse over just to, uh, to show you the area that I am uh, referring to. The first chart uh, shows the usage uh, of selected resources in the project and uh, each separate colour uh, stands for an allocation as uh, this enables the display of uh, numerous resources in a cramped and limited uh, space environment. Moving on to uh, the second diagram. The second diagram highlights uh, the cost uh, per week in red, as you can see here, and the income is coloured green. The third diagram on my far right hand side uh, shows the sum of total values. And um, this diagram can also be changed to show the difference between cost and income. Before I proceed to show you the difference between uh, cost and income, I'm just going to uh, increase the view of the page slightly. So if I click on the main toolbar and select 125%, I think uh, generally for this purpose, this definitely is more visibly and graphically uh, appealing. By clicking the, uh, the diagram or the, the histogram, as uh, we call them in Tylos, in the details toolbar, clicking on the Define Histogram View tab and then selecting Display Settings. I can then click or I can tick the box next to Stacking and uh, Grouping by confirming OK. I can now see that uh, during the first weeks uh, of our project that we have taken in more money, we have had more income in green than we have incurred cost displayed in red.
project that we have been working on during this session can also be displayed in a number of graphical styles. If I go to the, uh, the Tylos Explorer and click on Gantt View Default, this default view chart displays the entire project as a Gantt chart. And Gantt charts, however, uh, can be flexibly defined by setting filters and grouping stations also. By proceeding to grouped by type of work, if I click on this, then I can see that the view that I'm given here shows a summary for each different task, followed by the planning tasks, as you can see here under the, uh, the bar line titles. Now, these summaries, they can actually be switched off, so basically by clicking on the, uh, the minus symbol, we, uh, we can see that all the tasks belonging to uh, the same group can, uh, can be displayed in one bar line. And uh, last but not least, if we click on Grouped uh, by Resources, we can see here that uh, we can display uh, the assigned resources as a Gantt chart in order to uh, identify uh, where a resource has been assigned to. So, for example, if we, uh, if we look at the assistant as a resource, uh, we can see uh, that he has been assigned um, to a number of tasks, i.e. activities.